uh, we at River Rocks, we run closed end portfolios uh, in the life settlement space. What that means is um, think private equity strategy, uh, private equity terms, um, but we buy people's life insurance policies to create a uncorrelated yield alternative. Okay, so what is a life versus a viatical settlement? Yeah, so um, most people would probably have known viatical, viatical settlements. Um, viaticals are when somebody is terminally ill. So this asset class goes back to like the early 90s, late 80s with the AIDS pandemic. Um, and that's where we kind of really saw a reemergence of the, of the asset class. Um, and whereas a life settlement is somebody is not necessarily terminally ill. Okay, that makes sense. Um, how do you define small face policies and why do you focus on that segment of the market specifically? Yeah, sure, so life, uh, life settlements is like any other asset class, you have different segments of the market. Think of small face, think of small face as like the micro or small cap. Um, what that means to us is we don't buy policies that are greater than two and a half million dollar in face. And the reality is this majority of what we buy is between a hundred thousand dollars and a million dollars. Um, and we do that for, for to take advantage of certain socioeconomic trends that are already existing in the marketplace. Um, while you will see more policies evolve or come to market out of one geography over the other, just by, by you know demographics of that area, I think New York has more people than yeah. Um, we do try and spread that across across the country. Sure. Yeah. So for us, our risks are a little different than uh, maybe traditional other risks. Um, we really think about risks in terms of impairment. So impairment would be the disease that the individual has. Okay. Um, risks that we like are risks that um, don't have a binary outcome. So by, what I mean by binary outcome is um, think liver transplant. Somebody who brings a policy to market and is in the process and has not yet gotten a liver transplant looks to be pretty ill. Ergo, their life expectancy is pretty short, so the policy price is very high. However, the um, interesting aspect of that is is that if they get a liver transplant, they're cured, and that life expectancy can jump to, and be extended. So from an investment perspective, that's not something that we want to be involved in. So, um, you know, if we think about that last question in our conversation there, life expectancy is arguably the most important input um, because all we're doing is we're taking a face value. So if the policy's death benefits a million dollars, we're discounting at a given rate over a period of time, the life expectancy. Mm -hmm. So if you are materially off on your life expectancy, that can have a meaningful impact on your IRR for any given policy. Um, so being ultra conservative in um, how you calculate life expectancy and how you think about life expectancy is, is insanely important. Um, additionally, we don't lever our portfolios, um, and we have a minimum underwritten return of 13% inclusive of all fees and premiums expected to pay. So I think that's, uh, that's probably how we differ from our peers in the conservative nature of our underwriting process. There's an average estimated 2 point, or sorry, $225 billion in face value that is transactable, that's area of the market where we, where we could actually purchase policies. Um, our industry represents a static $25 billion. Wow. So on a, any given year, we're only 10% of that year's volume. So uh, depending on who you talk to, and there's two studies out there that are pretty good, a um, little dated, but uh, academic studies, uh, the correlation to the capital markets is anywhere from negative 0.12 to 0.06. Okay. Um, so pretty much as uncorrelated as it gets. Yeah. Um, no, in fact, it's the opposite, right? So uh, it's interesting because this is insurance, it's state regulated, not federally regulated. So if the insurance companies wanted to change this practice and they ultimately probably do because we're a bit of a B on their side, um, they would have to lobby each individual state. Okay. Um, and additionally, the states are trending in the opposite direction. There's certain things that are happening within states that um, they're more in favor of this transaction than not. So I'd say the regulatory tailwinds are strongly in our favor.